met her in the fall. Hello and welcome to the Fabulous Picture Show. I'm Amanda Palmer. In this very special edition, we witness the birth of a filmmaking nation. This is the story of Greenland, famous for the shrinking ice caps, and now they want to be famous for their first ever homegrown feature film. We start at the Cannes Film Festival. The most prestigious in the world, where producers raise vast budgets lunching in luxury hotels. Unless you're Mika Sok, the producer of Greenland's first feature. I've slept here. With scarce budget for luxuries. I've slept on the couch right here. And then on the floor here. That was good. But the problem with free accommodation on your mate's floor. How do I do this? No key for the front gate. Across the street. This first time producer needs nearly a million dollars. So far, he's only got 100,000. Um, we're actually running late. The ideal from this trip would be a distributor, worldwide distributor, and a co-producer putting a bit of cash in my pocket. But it's hard coming from a small country. When I arrived in the database, they, they didn't have my country listed. It's perhaps not surprising. There's only 57,000 Greenlanders living on the world's biggest island. Mostly covered by one of the world's biggest glaciers. We are Inuits and we originally for many thousands of years walked from Mongolia and over the Bering Strait and you know, we ended up here walking for many, many years. And as global warming melts their ice cap, Greenland's hoping to cash in. The looming global apocalypse has brought them more visitors, even more fish, and if less ice reveals the promised 30 billion barrels of oil, they'll be one of the richest nations on Earth. But the news hasn't reached Cannes as Mikasok approaches the Mexican Film Institute. They have a lot of indigenous people in Mexico and uh, I think this would be an, uh, a good choice. Yes. Hello. Hello. I'm Mickey Sock. Yes. I'm producing the first feature film out of Greenland. We are the government institution that is in charge to promote the Mexican films. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Much, nice muchas gracias. You. Gracias a ti. Okay, bye. bye. Next he tries a North American distributor. In Alaska you have the Inuits. Yeah. My fellow countrymen. Okay. So I was thinking maybe you had an interest in. Uh... My cousin is from Alaska. Uh huh. Yeah. You don't want to hear about my film. You don't want to buy it, maybe, or no. distribute it in America. No. 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 <laughs> that's right. that's clear talk. Right. It's good. It's good. I'm a small goldfish in can actually okay. because. I like your hat, though. Thank you. This is like a huge, huge event in the film industry and Greenland. It's not even on the map. But there is an upside to being from the middle of nowhere. Apparently it's, it's a bit sexy to, to be from Greenland and, and coming with the first feature film. It's attracted the interest of the Danish media. This first meeting is with Reuters Denmark. As a self-governing part of Denmark, Greenlandic filmmakers are banned from taking Danish funding. We don't have a film law, we don't have a film institute, we don't have a, the tools that a filmmaker would normally use in, in another country. But thanks to the article, Mikasok has a meeting with one of Denmark's biggest producers. Going into a meeting now with uh, Lars von Trier's uh, producer, uh, Peter Olbeck. Peter introduces Mikasok to a producer with $600,000 to invest, nearly all the funding he needs. But he'd have to shoot all the interiors in Sweden. Impossible for Greenland's first feature film. I've been talking and talking a lot about making the first feature film of Greenland. And I really just like to get started. Luckily, his can publicity has helped him raise a bit of money from Greenland's Central Film Fund. August 2008, and as Greenland's capital, Nuuk, bakes in its 10-degree summer, uh... 
The Numio production office is buzzing. The pre-production is coming to an end. Mika starts to raise 250 of the $900,000 he needs. Just enough for the first time director Otto to begin principal photography. In Nuke, out in the wilderness, and on the sea. There's a tendency that stories from Greenland is told by people from outside, and there's uh, like two versions. There's, there's the pretty, the pretty picture of the uh, hunter, and there's the other picture of the uh, downside of society. And I want to portray, as I know it, in the middle of society, normal story of daily life in uh, in New. So Watto created Malik, a carpenter slobbing through life and added a melancholic Greenlandic twist. Yeah, I wrote the story about this guy who is uh, having his daily life, as I know it, and uh, confronted by the death sentence of, of cancer. And what would you do? Would you stay in the city where your family and love is, or would you go to another country to prolong your life? To complicate matters, Malik's just met Nivi, a woman he really likes. And his best friend Michael wants Malik to help him realize his flaky dream of selling icebergs to farmers. But they get stranded in the wilderness where Malik is forced to confront his past and what little future he has left. It's a, it's a sad movie. It's, it's a, there's some, some fun things in it, but it's... Sad and heavy. While the actors can relax between takes, there's no rest for the producer. Normally you would finance a film 100% and then you would start shooting. We only got one fourth of what we need. And that's quite a challenge to produce a film with uh, actually kind of no money. And he can't fail. Financiers may not trust the first timers, but a whole country is now watching. It's the first Greenlandic produced movie. And I think that it's part of the, this young nation building thing going on. Making a feature film in Greenland means a lot to the uh, self-understanding of who we are as, as a people and as an indigenous people. Since 1721, Denmark has imposed Scandinavian ideas of the good life, material and spiritual, onto this country of proud hunters. The result is a new hybrid culture. I think some people are kind of confused about who they are and what they want. A PlayStation and an Xbox compared to this, I mean, uh, it's quite far from each other. Even with self-rule, Greenland's tiny population relies on many Danes to help run their country. Greenlandic people are debating their relationship to, Green, to Denmark. Before it's been that Denmark has been doing everything for Greenland, but now we're at the point where we have to make our own decisions. And one of those is to change Danish representations of Inuits as hopeless dependents. Otto and Mikasok plan to do more than show the new Greenland. They want to train up a local film industry. The crew is a mixed crew, people with uh, barely no experience in filming. It's new for me, so... It's new for all of us. <laughs> <laughs> we have uh, people from Denmark who is uh, highly experienced, and then we have people from Greenland who has uh, none or a little experience. And we mix those two groups together. Lena and Paul are Greenlanders hoping to start careers in film. After learning from Danish art director Sabine Veed. I am a prop master. I have been studying at a local art school. I think that's the most experience I have. <laughs> 
Så da man ikke han er ved at række ud, så satte jeg kast. I'm in charge of the, the continuity in the movie. It's a big responsibility, and it's a very hard job. It's a lovely political goal to mix that experience. So we have uh, experience from Denmark and learning by doing in Greenland. We can't buy that in Lega. Give me a second. Mika Song's checking up on the preparations for a key scene at a sheep farmer's house, supposedly in the wilderness. My first idea was to be inside the, the bottom of the fjord for a couple of weeks. But since that was pretty expensive, we needed to change the production. This place is like 15 minutes of, of travel time. And that's how filmmaking is, compromises every day, you know. This now disused village is only used during school holidays and was heavily graffitied before the art department started work. Hello. <laughs> We still need a lot more stuff to be done. With the shoot ending soon, Lena is one of the first Greenlanders to take over a whole department. But the production is surviving on donations and favours. Every time we need a prop, we have to use double the time to get, because normally you just buy it. My father's polar bear! But this film wouldn't have got far if Mika Salk wasn't ever the optimist. You know, as soon as the lights up and, and they're getting finished, it's going to look great. Coming up in part two, the crew must trek across country for the vinyl shoot. We're carrying a reindeer to a reindeer hunt. And the edit is threatened when director Otto falls into a depression. I was not able to do anything else but just being alone. He met her in the A month into filming, the crew of Greenland's first feature, Numiok, have saved their most grueling shoot for last. We're actually sailing all the way into the bottom of Nuuk Fjord to Gapsikli, where they so they're going to sleep on the way. It takes about six, seven hours. It's actually, one of the, the world's biggest fjords. With no roads between towns, the mothership is their transport for locations outside Nuuk, in their home for the next three days. We have really long days of shooting and people are getting tired now. And it's especially tough on the professional members of the crew. I've been the driver for, for the entire crew. Um, I've been the grip. Um, I've, I've done some sailing uh, yeah. at times. He's going to be half a credit. Yeah. <laughs> but the training regime's paid off. The all Greenlandic art team have transformed a derelict shack into a house where Malik confronts the sheep farmer about his parents' death. And spirits are high. It's been going good today. The next uh, location in Kapisilit, which is uh, eight hours boat trip from now, where the rest of the sheep farm is uh, located. While the cast and crew bid down on the mothership, Mika Sok must return to town for emergency supplies. Quite difficult finding a a whole dead reindeer in the middle of the morning. We're using it for the hunt scene, and in case we don't find a live animal and shoot it, we have this uh, backup uh, reindeer. But as Mikasok rejoins the crew, there's been another setback. Just arriving and the boat is, boat is sinking. Yeah. What the hell? The day shoot must capture Michael and Malik working for the hard-hearted sheep farmer, but the star is reluctant. The consultant farmer Mo won't take no for an answer. We're gonna have like a text in the end credit of the film saying all animals were killed, eaten and enjoyed during this production. The first priority today is camera shot of the reindeer. So whatever happens, and we see a live reindeer, everybody shuts up and Bo is filming it. They don't see as well as, as we do. So as long as we just, uh, you know, don't move if we see one, they can't see us. It's a three kilometers trek to the location with equipment and their backup stunt corpse. I'm carrying this into the place where we're shooting. 
We're gonna walk in a straight line, okay. all of us, and Mo's gonna be in front. We're gonna do some military signs when we see one. And with caribous and camera equipment, there's no hands left for catering. At the first ridge, Mo sees a reindeer, and everyone freezes. But it's a false alarm, and Mo thinks the reindeer are in the cool hills. Okay, so we're going for the next ridge. And after the next ridge, so we have uh, another chance to see a livestock. We're carrying a reindeer to a reindeer hunt. Isn't that crazy? Maybe not. With only enough budget for one day on this shoot, they risk the hunt for the location. Here's why. I'm hungry, thirsty, but, but happy. This is it. This is the best. It's the cat's whiskers. It's the bee's knees. One of the early scenes from the film, it establishes Malik's deep relationship with Greenland. Okay. So this is his tranquility place. This is where he has the quietness in his, in his body and in his mind. And the stand-in reindeer is finally ready for its close-up. And principal photography ends with a shot that could only be taken in Greenland. <laughs> See you in the cinema. We love you. <laughs> now things get really tough for Mikasok. With no money left, production has come to a juddering halt. Nothing can happen until he raises the remaining $650,000 needed to turn their footage into a finished film. Luckily, they have a secret weapon, this teaser trailer. It shows it's not just an idea in someone's head, it's, it's actually a production going on. And it looks beautiful. Today, Mikasot's hoping it'll help convince a big investor the chairman of Greenlandic Mining Services. With this footage, Mikasok's finally unlocking some money. But it's a nerve-wracking, time-consuming process of long meetings, yeah. Yeah. sometimes leading to small lumps of funding. It would be super. It would be a big help. Having him on board will have other people coming on board, because he's uh, a pretty big businessman here in Greenland, so uh, it's pretty, pretty nice. Pretty, 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 pretty. Woo! But it takes eight months of fundraising before post-production can begin in Denmark. The editors are based here in Copenhagen, so we, we went down here about 12 weeks ago. You always kind of need some extra takes that you didn't do, and especially in this film, since we had such a tight schedule and tight budget, we kind of had to be very creative in the editing process. And the ultimate casualty of their tight production was director Otto. After the shooting of this film, I had a depression. I was down on the, on the, on the basement. My head had been filled so much with this pressure of getting everything right for the film, and then now we're editing a lot of things out. Yeah, I did a little thought. Just a week into editing, Otto was unable to work. I feel like I've been running so fast that I lost my soul somehow. And then I had to crash and stay in my home for a couple of months until my soul finally had reached me. Screenwriter Torben Beck had to take over the edit, earning himself a co-director credit. It's become a very collective project. Like not only by being uh, amateurs and all, having not enough money, not enough time. I think we really, really, it's a really beautiful uh, kind of hippie-ish way yeah, of, of doing yeah. it. And, yeah. and, and it's so not the way to make films in general, mm -mm. but this just works. 
October 2009, and Nuke is buzzing with news of Numiok's premiere. Mikasok's tireless courting of Greenland's private investment funds has led him here. The production's finished, and we're premiering tonight. And I'm getting a haircut because I accidentally told the journalist that I wouldn't get a haircut until the premiere. This is party time now, you know? We're finished. Well, nearly, Mikasant still has to organize his own premiere. The culmination of two years' work. And it's been really, really hard getting finished. Uh, we ran out of money like 10 times or something. But I didn't think about giving up at any time. Martin, we have done the best we could. I'm happy with our work. That's it. First, cast and crew celebrate not giving up. I'm very proud. I'm proud of all the people that contributed to the film. I'm a happy guy. Tonight we're going to see the result of what we did last summer. I've looked forward for this day now one year, I think. Tonight is the night. My hopes are that people here in Greenland will like the film and love the film and care about the film and most of all be proud of the film. My friends made kids and bought houses and cars and had a life and I really just didn't do anything besides this film. You have spent a million people, you have hjulpet til, I har sat ting til rådighed, I har givet rabatter og I har været rigtig gode af sammen. And it seems Mika Sok's hard work has paid off. The first all Greenlandic funded and produced feature film looks stunning. And they've managed to tell a beautiful story that captures their life today. While also being undeniably uniquely Greenlandic. I think it's a very uh, bold movie. It gave a very sincere picture of uh, Greenlandic Danish culture. It's a movie that gives the viewer space to think. I had tears in my eyes, so that's a, that's a, that's a good sign for this movie. Mikasot is going to have to stop calling himself an amateur because Numiok has been accepted into the main competition of the prestigious Sundance Film Festival. So congratulations. Hope you enjoyed the show and hope to see you next time. See you then.